Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I'm Ken Levine, and um, the Nexus is the big daddy. Is that what you wanted? Unfortunately for most of us, doing whatever we want means being a right evil piece of work. Here's our top five ways of making innocent digital people's lives a misery. Grand Theft Auto 4 brought back the dating aspect introduced in GTA San Andreas, once again giving you the option to take ladies out for a spot of bowling and a romantic meal, or luring them into a helicopter under the guise of giving them an unparalleled view of Liberty City's urban sprawl, only to then bail out at several thousand feet into the bay, leaving them to take a crash course in chopper piloting lest they suffer an explosive demise. And still she calls back. Take a hint, would you? In all likelihood, Megaton is the first sign of civilization you'll come across after stumbling out of Vault 101 at the beginning of Fallout 3. In the harsh and unforgiving world of the capital wasteland, Megaton is a welcoming oasis, its inhabitants friendly and lovable, and you can establish it as your base, building yourself a home, helping the town and winning the hearts of the townsfolk in the process. Or you can stand on a rooftop half a mile away and blow it up with a nuclear bomb in exchange for some bottle caps and a penthouse suite. Take that, losers! One of the major additions to Fable 2 was the ability to raise a family, to fall in love and sire children, and then the game gives you the option of joining an evil cult and sacrificing your loved ones for the greater bad by using a device that randomly selects a grisly means of offing them. Well, what is the truly evil gamer supposed to do? John Marsden is a pretty stand-up guy. Having reformed his former outlaw ways, he's now searching for his erstwhile gang members to bring them to justice, so he can see his wife and son again. He kills only when necessary and shuns the plentiful advances of the ladies of the night who populate the Old West's many saloons. So far, so ethical. So quite how kidnapping someone, tying them to the railroad tracks and waiting for the inevitable grim finale fits into his strict moral code is beyond us. Mind you, we're the ones making him do it, so who's the real monster? Yeah, it's still him. However, arguably no game gives you more license to conduct psychotic, psychological and sociological experiments than The Sims. The possibilities are almost endless. Make your Sim go swimming, then remove the ladder so they can't get out of the pool. Put your Sim in a windowless, doorless room decorated only with the same clown painting over and over again. Make two rooms facing each other, one with an ample supply of food but no toilet, one with a toilet but no food, and make the unlucky Sims watch each other. Watch. 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 What? Uh, okay, so this game pitch has been sent in by a user of ours called Aphid, and it's an action game that turns the genre on its head by fully kitting your warrior out with weaponry at the start, only for your arsenal to malfunction as the game progresses, forcing you to use your brains and improvise new methods of death, death dealing. Hmm. Um, let's see. Well, it's a risk there. You're taking power away from the player. We usually like to earn and grow in power, so I think you, 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 you know, if, you're, if your most powerful parts of the game are the beginning, you're going to run into some problems there. Um, it sounds like a fun experiment, though. It's an interesting game design concept. I would do it as a budget title. I would do it as low risk because I think it's a high risk pitch. So if I, take, if I do it with a small budget and test the premise, uh, something simple, something um, that can, I can afford to do with high production values but low budget, then I can test the premise and see if it works with gamers, see if I can figure out that balance of actually taking power away but still motivating and encouraging guys to want to move forward. And if I succeed there, then maybe I'd make a bigger bet and try to do it on, uh, on the main stage. Yeah. Well done, Aphid. Right, so the kind of main uh, mechanic we're doing here is wall jumping where you're sliding partially down the wall and then jumping again but you can just you can stay on one wall and just keep jumping up right uh yeah you can the wall jump is basically your your, your main ability uh you can also dash and uh to do uh, extended jumps um on each level you're basically uh tracking down your girlfriend for some reason dr fetus is just leaving her in uh, different <laughs> right. locations around the levels yeah. I'm, I'm not sure what his ultimate goal is he just seems to like being a little bit uh devious and uh uh, dastardly. Well, he's only a fetus, maybe his brain isn't fully developed. Yeah, he's, he wants to be a villain, but he doesn't quite know what he wants to do with the girlfriend once he's kidnapped her. He's certainly got the outfit. But once you do get to her, every time he, uh, he, he'll disappear again right. and, uh, and take it to the next level. And thus he progressed through Super Meat Boy. Once you finish a level, it replays all of your attempts at once. Right. So you get, um, if you've been really quite rubbish at the level, you get a, uh, a stream of Super Meat Boys just sort of uh, swarming through the level. Yeah, swarming to their deaths like lemmings. 
So this trail of blood that you leave everywhere you go, this, uh, this is persistent, like throughout all of your lives? Uh, yeah, I mean, once you, once you die on numerous occasions, um, the level will just become soaked in your own uh, viscera, <laughs> right. uh, which is yeah. sort of a, it's a little bit disgusting, but when you play it for 10 minutes, you really do get used to the sight of, um, of smeared bodily fluids. And this, uh, but it gives you a kind of visual cue as well as to where you're supposed to be hitting yes. or where you're not supposed to be hitting. Yeah, if you if you see a trail of blood leading to um, a large pool of blood, just, just <laughs> avoid going down that route anymore because yeah. it's not working for you. So, I mean, we've been playing here for, for a little while and the kind of standard response to playing this seems to be just ah, ooh, ah, the whole way through. So how would you say the, the difficulty is, is pitched? It's, um, it's quite difficult. Yeah. I mean, uh, you will get very frustrated, but it does a lot to sort of temper frustrations. Um, the replays I was talking about where it shows um, all of your attempts at once. When you die, you, you feel like you're sort of, um, you're contributing to that, uh, to that awesome replay. Yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the last title in uh, Game Feast. It's coming out on uh, October the 20th. Um, would you recommend people go out and pick it up? Definitely. I mean, fans of classic platformers, I think that it's, everyone loves classic platformers. Um, this, this is uh, the bread and butter, really. The bloody bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> bread and butter and meat. Yes, it's, um, it's just a really fun, really uh, quite, quite simple mechanics. Just make it uh, just a joy to play. Um, I'd recommend it to anyone. And that's it for this week's show. So, what have we learned? That morality in video games can take a slightly simplistic view? Yeah, apparently. You haven't even seen the cat, you just said you did. Yeah, she seemed pleased regardless. Yeah. Anyway, we'll be back next week with another Nexus. If you have a suggestion for a top five game list, a game series that you'd like us to run a feature on, or even design a background for the show, The Haunted Princess Still Knows All. We've tried getting rid of it, but even the country's top psychics and Derek Akora can't help. Hmm. <laughs> That's ominous. See you next week. <laughs>